Good evening. Uh, for this evening lesson, we want to talk to you about uh, where is your faith? Where is your faith? And we, we want to come from uh, Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. And, and hopefully we could say some things this evening that just encourage you and that would help your life and, and that it would encourage you throughout whatever it is you're dealing with right now. But we're going to start with Matthew chapter 6, verses 24 through uh, 25, I'm sorry, through 34. He says, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. Uh, they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you, by wearing, can add one cubit to his statue? So why do you worry about clothing, considering the lilies of the field, how they grow, neither toil nor spin? And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God has so clothed the grass of the field, which, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall I eat, or what shall I drink, or what shall we wear? For, for after all these things the Gentiles seek for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore do you not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Where is your faith? So we want to look at this and talk about uh, where is our faith right now? You know, when we panic and we're weary and we get all caught up and sidetracked. And I, I want to show you some things about uh, worrying and faith and things. It doesn't always come in the sense of, worrying doesn't always come in the sense of uh, that you, you are anxious all the time about something. Or, or let me say, it doesn't always show itself in the same symptoms in the same ways. Uh, and so worry can turn into panic. It can turn into uh, doing things of that nature and, and turn into uh, being where we get caught up uh, in other things. And so when we look at this here, uh, do you worry? Jesus said, be anxious uh, and do not worry. When we think about Philippians, I don't want you to turn there, but just listen to this. When Paul talks about Philippians, he says, be anxious for nothing. In other words, worry about nothing. But through all things, through prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. So Paul was letting us know there that don't worry about anything, but, but just pray about it. And let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God will guard our lives. And so Jesus is here telling us in Matthew that we shouldn't be worried about things. We should allow God to be who he is and take care of our situations. And he uses the analogy. Watch what he uses here. He says, uh, do you worry about clothing? Verse number 28, consider the lilies of the field. How they grow, they neither toil nor spin. And yet I'll say to you, Solomon in his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If God clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, Will he not much more clothe you, O ye a little faith? So, so Christ is saying, just reasonably think about what are we worried about? If God takes care of the grass, I mean, we see this time of year people cutting grass and lawnmowers, chopping the grass up and mulching the grass and doing all other kinds of things and raking it, putting it in bags and throwing it away. He says, God, don't that grass grow back? Don't that grass grow back? If, if you're like me in my house, my kids say, Dad, I don't want to cut the grass this high. I want to cut it lower so it don't grow back as fast. That's because God takes care of it, just like God takes care of us. And so the analogy he's trying to get us to understand is why do we worry when we know that God takes care of the lilies of the field, he takes care of the grass, and he takes care of the food that grows for us to eat on, and it replenishes. And so even in today, with, with supply chain being low of, you know, some meat markets having to close down, you know, uh, sanitizer and toilet paper and paper towels. And you see people wearing and panicking and, and, and almost losing their minds. And you go into the stores and there's nothing on the shelves because people are weary. 
But God says, don't be weary. What are you worried about? Don't I take care of you? Don't I take care of your needs? I'll always provide for you. So that's what I want, want us to understand tonight. But I also want us to understand it, how important it is, not just we're weary about what's going to happen in our future, but sometimes we worry about what happened in our past. You know, we messed up. We made some mistakes. We made some bad decisions. We did some things that, that may not be godly. And we, we still worry about those things, but God doesn't want us to worry about things in our past. He wants us to move forward past those things and leave those things behind. As Paul again said in Philippians, the things that I did in my past, I, I, I left them behind. I'm pressing on. And that's why as a Christian, we have to be resilient. We have to be able to, to bounce forward. We have to be able to abound uh, in the Lord because it's important that we understand that things that happened in the past, we got to put that behind and move forward in our personal life. When we mess up, I got to put it behind. I got to move forward once, once God's forgiven me for that. Uh, so another thing is, I want you to think for a second about what are you afraid of? Or are you afraid of anything? Are you afraid? I know that you know, there are some high school seniors that are afraid because now they're out of high school. Now they are, are going to be leaving mom and dad's house, their safety net, and they're going to be going out and, 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 and adventuring out into life, into this world, this big world to them. And they're going to be going out there and trying to figure out how to make things happen. And, and they're going to be scared. They're going to be afraid. They're going to be wary. And we need to make sure that we teach them how not to worry about those things and that God will take care of them and provide for them as they are away, as they go to school, and as they do the other adventures. Even if they don't go to school and they do other things and they decide just to get a job, that God still will provide for them if they put him first in everything that they do. You know, uh, you have kids that will be getting ready to go to high school from middle school. They'll be nervous and wary. You know, you have kids that be transferring, going to other schools. They'll be nervous and worried about new starts. You have people now, because of what's happened uh, with the pandemic and people losing their jobs, you even have people that are now nervous because they haven't, it's been years since they had to fill out an application. It's been years since they had to sit down in a job interview. And now they, and, and to some people, they even have to learn a new tool, a new skill and they're afraid, they're wary, they're afraid. So again, what are you afraid of? Are you afraid of being broke? Are you afraid of losing all your money, all your stocks and bonds, all your savings accounts? Are you afraid of getting sick and dying? Do you live your life where every day you worry about is the day of the day I'm gonna die? Oh Lord, am I gonna die today? I don't wanna leave out the house. Do you, do you worry about your kids when they leave out the house? Oh, Lord, please don't. And you can't even enjoy yourself while they're gone because you worry about them not coming back home. What are you afraid of? What frightens you? Jesus said, why are you worried about it? You can't change it, right? You can't change it, you know? He said, what, how can, if, if you worry, does that change any of your stature? Can you make yourself grow any taller by worrying about how small you are? So if you can't change it, why worry about it? It's what Jesus is trying to get us to understand. Who can change it? God. So because God can change it, we need to just turn it over and give it to him through prayer and supplications and making our requests made known to him that he takes care of us. So what are we afraid of? Let's look at some examples of the Bible of some things that people are afraid of. And of course, just like everything else, we can't look at all of them. We're going to look at a few of them. But of course, uh, we'll look at a few, pull a few in. Uh, one, Herod was, was afraid of the multitude. He was afraid of the multitude in Matthew chapter 14. Another one we find that Peter uh, was afraid of, of, of persecution, you know, he, Peter got afraid when, when Jesus died and they crucified Christ and they came to Peter 
They said, you with him? Peter was afraid they were going to crucify him. He, he got afraid. He, so th there's something that can reach us that we, we are fearful from. Are you afraid of growing old, dying alone? Are you afraid of, of, of your wife leaving you, run off with all your money? What, what, what is it that, that, that fear factor you have in place? Peter had these fear factors. Let's look at Matthew 8, verse 25 and 26. Matthew chapter 8, 25, 26. Watch this. Then the disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing. He said, Why are you fearful, O oh, your little faith? And he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and the, the wave was calm. What were they afraid of? Jesus said, What are you afraid of? They were afraid of, for their life. They were afraid of death. They were afraid that this was their demise. They were going to die. So we got to go wake up Jesus. We got to shake him. We got to shake him. Lord, you got to get up. Don't you, don't you care? You're going to help us. And that's how people are. And we got to make sure, especially in this time and day we live, keep it practical and, and make this applicable for our lives. In this time and day that we live with all the reckless stuff going on and governments fighting and with, with nobody agreeing and with with all the stuff happening and this COVID-19 virus going on and, you know, people are coming in a big panic. And who do you think is the most happiest? Because people are worried about stuff. Gyms are worried about not being able to open, so they're fighting to open up. Some restaurants say we'll open. Some restaurants say we're still not going to open because they're worried. The devil wants us to be in this panic mode. Oh, I got to go to the store and I got to buy everything on the shelf, everything I can get my hands on, all the toilet paper, all the paper towel. I bet you some of y'all, I, I, I don't know, I haven't been in your shelf, I haven't been in your home. But I bet you some of y'all, if I came in your pantry or came in your house or your storehouse, you probably have six months worth of toilet paper stocked up, six months worth of of sanitizer, six months worth of uh, 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 paper towels, six worth month of cleaning supplies to make sure you don't run out. And every time you get lower than six months, you go out to the store and buy a whole new thing of it again. Wear it, wear it. Don't you realize the devil gets glory in seeing you wear it like this? in seeing you struggle like this, in seeing your mind and your wheels turning like this. There's some of us who are getting depressed because we wear it. Some of us who are losing, afraid we're gonna lose our homes, afraid we're gonna lose our jobs or lose our careers or lose our family members. And those are legit concerns but your wearing doesn't change it. Your wearing doesn't fix it. Your wearing only puts you in the hospital. Your wearing only gives you depression where you have to take medications. Your wearing only hurts you, not help you to where you can't even focus on the things you need to. <laughs> so they was afraid of dying, they was afraid of death. What are you afraid of? And then let's look at Matthew 14, 31. Matthew 14 and 31. Immediately Jesus struck out his hand, caught him and said, Oh, you little faith, why did you doubt? Are y'all noticing this trend here? Do, do y'all Are y'all following this trend? That every time Jesus goes to rescue people, every time Jesus talks to them about faith, about wearing, he says, Oh, ye, of little faith. Where is your faith? And that's the question on the table this evening is where is your faith when it comes to God, when it comes to trusting Him and believing in Him? See, because when we know who God is, we can be solid and sound in what it is that we do. Peter here doubted God. Jesus says, Oh, ye of little faith, where is your faith? 
Look at verse 31 again. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and called him. So even when we doubt, even when we have faith, even when we weary, what do we need to do? We need to call out to Jesus. See, God, what we have to understand and realize is that God is such a good God. He doesn't punish us for worrying. He doesn't punish us for doubting. He doesn't punish us for, for, for not being where we need to be and where he needs us to be in our faith. He only shows us grace and mercy. He only shows us a loving hand of him. And he stretches out his hands and says, come on in, man. Why did you even doubt me? Why would you even doubt me? You know, that's a real friend. Why, why, God said, why do you even doubt who I am? Because when we're worried, that's what we're doing if we're doubting that God can do what he's supposed to do for our lives or we'll do what he's going to do in our lives. So we look at this. What's something else that we worry about or we doubt God about? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 tells us what? That we walk by what? Faith and not by sight. So if we walk by faith and not by sight, we worry about things that we see. But we should live by things that we cannot see. So therefore, the things that we don't see overtakes that which we see. And I bet you there are some of us that get on and you look at your you look at your 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 financial accounts every morning, which you should. You look at your stocks and your bonds every every day and see if the stock rolls or if it fell or is it a good time to sell, is it a good time to keep, which you should. You look at your personal financial accounts and you look and see uh, what's going on with that, which you should. But we should not put our faith in what we see when we look at those accounts. We should not put our faith in what we see when we open those accounts. Our faith should be in God. We walk by faith and not by sight. And so we understand those things. Let's look at an example of someone who wanted to walk by sight. Turn to John chapter 20. John chapter 20. We're going we're gonna to end with this tonight. John chapter 20. Where is your faith? Oh, ye a little faith, is what God would say. Oh, I just, I'm just scared. Oh, I just can't do all. Oh. oh, ye a little faith. Look at John chapter 20. We're going to start with verse number 25. Or verse 24, so we get a whole capture. And we'll be in John 20, 20, verse 24 through 31. And we'll finish with this. Now Thomas called the twin. One of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said, that we, we have seen the Lord. So he said to them, unless I see his hands and the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, put my hand into the side, I will not believe. So Thomas is pretty much saying, man, forget that. I'm not walking by faith. I'm walking by sight. I got to touch. I got to feel. I got to have some tangible things. And that's how so many of us walk. It's got to make sense. You got to touch and feel. Even in this situation we're in with the church, even in COVID-19, has your faith become stronger or has your faith become weaker because you haven't been able to come to the building and physically worship God? For God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So we still can connect with God even though physically we're not connecting with fellowship with one with another at the building. So the answer should be my faith has increased because of this pandemic and not decreased. Oh, ye of little faith, where is your faith? Thomas says, I got to see it for my own self. I don't take nothing y'all say. I don't believe anything you're saying. 
I want to see this. And that's how many some of us are when it comes to our faith. But watch what happens next. And after eight days, his disciples were inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came to the door and stood still. Peace be with you. I want you to understand something here. The Bible says after eight days. So Jesus didn't get in a hurry to prove his point to Thomas. He didn't get in a hurry to show Thomas that, hey man, I am who I am. Thomas, you asked for it, boom, here I am. Touch me, feel me. I need you to get it right today. No, Jesus didn't do that. Jesus took his time. Jesus had more important things to do than worry about somebody whose faith was doubting for no reason. He had, Thomas had more reason to believe that Christ returned than he did to doubt Christ's return. Think about that for a moment. Thomas had more reason to believe that Christ came and showed himself to the disciples than he did not to believe. But he chose not to believe. And sometimes that's where we are in our lives. We have more evidence to believe in who God is and what he'll do for our lives and what, and what he'll bring us through. But we choose to not believe based on the lack of evidence that we have. Hmm. Then he said to Thomas in verse 27, reach your finger here and look my hands and, and reach your hand here and put it into my side and do, do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas Hanson said to him, my Lord and my God, Jesus said to Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus is letting Thomas know. It took you seeing me for your belief. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to allow it. And I, and I welcome your faith because I know you're not where you need to be. But Thomas, I want you to realize that more blessed are those that believe without seeing me than you. O ye of little faith. Does God always have to show you something tangible physically to get you to trust him? Do you choose to walk by faith and not by sight? Or do you choose to walk by sight and not by faith? Be anxious for nothing. We're in, we're not adding anything to you except for stress, high blood pressure, and maybe a stroke or depression. May God bless you and may God keep you this evening. Where is your faith? Let us bow in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day. Lord, we pray and ask you to be with us, to lead us and to guide us. Father, we pray and ask you that if we get ready to in this Bible study, that you will bless us and you will bless the ones that are uh, listening in there, Lord. Pray, Father, that you will increase our faith. We pray, Lord God, that we will continue to be who you have us to be and do the things that you would have us to do. Lord God, we pray and ask you that in all things, that your grace and your mercy will rest and rule in our lives until the next time we meet. Forgive us for our sins. This is our prayer, Lord, and we ask it all in your loving Son, Jesus' name. Amen.